Hello everybody, my name is Holly and I will be the one of the language trainers for this hour. We will be actually talking about the difference between British English and American English. And it should be fun to go over vocabulary words this way. And um, uh, like normal, uh, my goal for you guys is to uh, learn new vocabulary words and also practice speaking in order to increase your fluency. Um, so yeah, so this class, we will do a little bit of reading. We will talk about the difference between British English and American English, and also how language has changed. Let me show you the material. Um, so first of all, we'll, we'll talk about how language has changed through the years. And then we will go on to uh, do a reading activity. So uh, uh, everyone will get a chance to read and we will practice pronunciation and le learn new vocabulary through that reading. And um, then we will look at some vocabulary and do some vocabulary matching and discuss these, practice using it. Then we will have a speaking practice and then we will do a vocabulary matching activity. So, hello, Christian, how are you? Hello, Holly, I'm fine. And how are you? Oh, pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Remind me where you are from. I'm from Colombia. Colombia, that's a, that was a, that what I was thinking, but I wasn't completely sure. Exactly, good. So what's the weather like right now in Colombia? Mm, it's summertime. Uh-huh. Okay, in so the major part of the country is it's really hot. Really hot. Okay. So that's that's makes it nice. That's good. You hear about the rest of us. It's uh, you know um, very cold where the rest of us are. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So have you had a good weekend so far? Yeah, but yeah. yesterday I didn't do nothing, but it had been a nice weekend so far. Uh, so far, yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Yeah, I've I, I kind of have barely started. I've had you know I guess you too, uh, just a morning um morning time because it's just barely afternoon for both of us. Or I guess it's yeah. is it 3 p.m. for you now? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, and it's 1 p.m. for I for me. So excellent. So anyway. Um, yeah, so today's topic, we're going to go over truck or lorry, basically the difference between British English and American English. Which which type of English do you find easier to understand, British English or American English? I think American English because I'm more exposed to American movies and television. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm more used to the American English. Mm -hmm. Now, if... When people uh, in Colombia uh, travel, do a lot of people go up north to the states because it's just closer than they would go, for example, to Europe? Or no, I think it's the same. same going okay. to Europe or going to the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I was saying that, and then I realized, wait a minute. When I went to Colombia, it took it took forever <laughs> to get down there. <laughs> So, so I had I had to fly to uh to I flew to Salt Lake and then I flew to New York City, and then New York to um to Columbia. So that was a long flight. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I So yeah, all right. Um, yeah, is uh, I guess as more people come, we have uh I think it was it looked like a full house. Uh, as far as reservations goes, or almost a full house, yeah, seven people reserved. So we'll see how many people actually come <laughs> to the yeah. track. So, yeah. All right. Well, well uh, can, when you think about uh, the Spanish language, um, is your language evolving, or or is it changing at all? Yeah, obviously, obviously changing. Mm -hmm. Mm, the thing that affect the most the language are the, the new technologies, the information technologies. Mm -hmm. 
and something slide to it in mm -hmm. or or new vocals mm -hmm. had been recently approved by the by the Royal Spanish Academic. I don't remember uh -huh. the the name, the uh -huh. exact name. So do you do you guys get new words every year in your um, whatever uh, governing body that decides on language like we do? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. have. Do you guys have the word selfie in your language? You what word? Selfie. Selfie. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's it's interesting. I um. Uh, selfie is you know when you take a picture of yourself, and I had a a friend um post on Facebook with her new phone. She goes, I'm making taking uh, taking selfies for the first time, and instead of taking pictures of herself, she took a picture of her dog. <laughs> so <laughs> she's thinking. She's thinking a selfie is taking a picture with your cell phone. And I thought that was really funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so you have a lot of uh, words in Spanish that are coming from from the Internet and so forth. Um, yeah. And, 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 and which is the same as in, in English as well. And, and it's, it's kind of interesting to watch and so forth, so... All right. Yeah, here we also have that of some words they introduce it in the language and not the the word in English, but it's the translation. Mm. Um for others is the they keep the the root of the word. Oh they keep the same root? Yeah. Like for for example. Do you have no. An no, I don't remember any word. Okay, any. But I said it. Okay, all right. Hi, Antonio. How are you today? He must be his, his computer must be loading. Christian, are you? Are you be careful, everyone. Uh, hi, hi, Antonio. So, how how was your I'm Saturday? It's very quiet. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. It's always I'm really quiet. at home and doing anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm at home doing nothing. Doing so nothing. doing nothing. Um, okay. Yeah, those are always very nice days if you don't have too many in a row. <laughs> so, so, excellent. All right. Yeah, and um, is the weather really good right now in Spain? The weather is a bit cold. It was very cold and windy and rainy and stormy in the north. Uh, um, in the south is better, mm -hmm. like always. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah, because I think Spain is big enough that it depends on where you are. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. All right, so we're, we're going over uh, the difference between British English and American English today, which is, I think it should be uh, an interesting and fun topic. Um, so, Antonio, do you prefer or do you uh, make it, is it easier for you to understand British English or American English? I don't mind uh, British English or American English, but uh, in the... The school of idioms and where the what I I go uh, they prefer British English Celtic English uh, I don't know why but it's for for us it is compulsory mm -hmm. okay okay yeah so in school you listen to um, you heard and you practiced or you understood um, or, or you learned I'm sorry British English, <laughs> but yes. now now that you've been out of school, either you're fine with either British or American English. Okay, yeah. And uh, hello, Danny. How are you? I'm fine, and you? Excellent. Very good. Um, wh now wh remind me where you are from, Danny. I'm from Israel. Israel. Okay. Awesome. 
And is it hot in Israel right now? Um, not so much. Okay. Are you? But you guys are it's summertime, right? It's not. It's is it summertime or winter time in, in Israel? Win it's winter. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, and it, now a question for you. Uh, since we're doing a lesson today on the difference between British and American English, which do you prefer, American English or British English? Mm, I prefer American English. Mm -hmm. Is that because of the movies that you've it, uh, you've been around more, or why? Uh, I I think I uh, will use it uh, more often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is more common. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, w what we're doing now is uh, uh, we're going to uh, just warm up. I've just asked um, already Christy and I already asked him. So, um, Antonio and Danny, is your language evol evolving? Um, yeah. Oh, it looks like he left. Okay. Antonio, is Spanish evolving? I don't know what evolving means. Okay, changing. Yes, it changes um, in many ways. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, nowadays uh, there is a lot of influence of South America, mm -hmm. and many people travel to Spain from South America and they are living, the, living here in many wars that they are not used to, be, used to use. Wow. <laughs> wow. What, um, Christian, what do you think of that? You guys are influencing uh, Spain. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I don't know how many Colombians are living in Spain, but I suppose it's possible. There are a lot of people who migrated to to Spain. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like American English and British English, both. Um, uh, what whatever you call it. Um, and both influence each other. So I guess it makes sense that uh, South American Spanish um, in, would influence Spain Spanish. Question for you guys. Um, is is uh, South American Spanish just as, uh, is it the same kind of differences between American English and British English, between European and American Spanish? But the, accent, the accent is different. Um, some kind of words are different also. And is, is it also different bet between different countries within South America? Yeah, it's different. Mm -hmm. Different, uh, yeah, a lot of different depending on where you are. For example, Chilean Spanish is really different to Colombian Spanish. Mm -hmm. And do you but do you, uh, like for example, Antonio? Can you understand all the people who are speaking Spanish as a native language, or do you have difficulties understanding accents? It depends, not for the accent, but it's for the words. The vocabulary. Uh, okay. uh, if you find uh, easy to understand someone who is talking, but they use a word that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. If they, it's not for speak, but uh, I, for example, here in Spain, we have a, very, a big problem with people from the south, from Andalusia. If you, I have a, a workmate from Andalusia, and many times I have to say to him, uh, please speak slowly and pronounce all the letters of the word. Mm. The, because if, if you don't speak slowly, I don't understand you. Mm, okay. Because of the way they pronounce and so forth. Okay, so that's it's fairly sim similar between British English and American English as well. I have difficulties understanding people from Scotland and Ireland if they are speaking very quickly, and um, and I've heard that people have difficulty understanding Americans who are from the south 
<laughs> southern part of the U.S. So, uh, uh, that's interesting. The language is, is fascinating. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and start on this reading activity, and then we'll go to vocabulary and speaking. So, what we will do is we will read through this text, and we will fill in four words. I will write these four words on the verb link chat in capital letters. So we have um, widespread, Christmas, adapt, and research. Do you guys know all of these words? Yeah. Widespread. Yeah. Okay. Widespread. Uh, if something is widespread, it is all over. For example, um, the internet. Because of the internet, uh, fashions are widespread all over the world. Okay. Things like that. <coughs> so you you it used to be. I think in back when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, it took about seven years for something to get become widespread go, to get all around the world <laughs> but now it's now it's what instantaneous <laughs> so all right so let's let's go ahead and read through this and um if i hear some pronunciation issues i will i will tell you um and let you know and otherwise um if there's any words or phrases that you do not know please ask me please write those words down okay um antonio can you read the first paragraph is the language in your country changing? Does the younger generation use expressions that baffle their grandparents? Recent research into British English has shown that there has been a rapid rise in the use of American English in everyday conversation. All right, thank you. And recent what? I think in research. Research, yes. Research into British English. There's been a rapid rise in the use of American English in everyday conversation. Okay, excellent. And Christian, can you read the next one? My children use words I never say, explain Carl Bridman. My son bought me season two of Dumpton AB for Christmas. My youngest describe everything as awesome. I think they must be watching to watch American TV. Yeah. Especially the word awesome. Awesome is very American. <laughs> so I'll read this next one, this one. The biggest catalyst for change is certainly the media. British television schedules are filled to the brim with comedy shows from the USA. The popularity of Facebook and Twitter means that American English has a strong influence on its British cousin. Antonio, can you read the next one? The biggest catalyst for change is it starts here. I, I just read this. It, it, it is. Yeah. It's not just spoken English that is changing in the UK. Spanish is becoming increasingly Americanized. Yale is much more um, adapt than Gaul and uh, this widespread. Widespread. Ah, widespread than Gaul. And the distinction between practice and practice is bordering on obsolete. Okay, and um, Christian, can you read the next one? I so thought there, there are many who decry the increase, the increasing influence of American English in the UK. It is now a new phenomenon. Words such as reliable, talented, and influential were originally imported from the US. Few people in Britain will now view this word as foreign. Well, these words as foreign. And this word right here, we actually would pronounce all of the sounds. So originally. 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 Yeah. Okay. And Antonio, can you read the last paragraph? Commentators have been complaining about changes in British English for many years. One written in one. And uh, 1712 wanted to fix our language forever so that nothing else will change. Other people, however, would argue that the ability of English to adapt to a changing world is its greatest strength. Yes, okay. 
All right. Yeah. Uh, just imagine if we still talked like people in 1712. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, we talk like that, but you guys in Spain and all the other languages have changed and, and so forth. <laughs> Okay, now are there any words or phrases in here that you guys do not know? Gal. Okay, gal. That is that is British English for jail. Yeah, it's a person. But yeah. I, hear, I, wonder, I wonder if it, I wonder if it sounds the same way as jail or something like that. Gal, I've never, I've personally never heard it. So okay. last summer I visited a gal in Ireland. Oh, did you? Did they call it a gal? No, no, no I, only for tourists. Okay. <laughs> How funny. Yeah. Um. All right. So that is that is British, and this is American, and this is of course a much more common pronunciation that people and spelling that people are using and it's more, more widespread. We're probably the older generation still use this word. And, okay. And what do you guys know what obsolete means? Yeah. Okay. So it's disappearing. Something is obsolete. It's no longer normal. And that's like practice and practice. Um, as a, 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 for me, I always get confused in which one is American and which one is British. So, okay, filled to the brim. Does everybody know what that means? Filled to the brim. To the border. Mhm. Mm exactly. So it's all the way. If you have a coffee that's filled to the brim, you need to drink a little before you move it. <laughs> so, okay. Catalyst. Does everybody know what catalyst means? Yes. Is the uh Trigger it. The, yeah, the, the thing that triggers, yeah. Uh, another word for would for trigger is something that triggers change, the catalyst for change. Perfect. Okay. And, all right. So, uh, would you, uh, have you guys noticed that there's a, a lot of times it's harder to know as, as language learners? Is there a, a, a really huge distinction between British English and American English? Have you n noticed? Is it more similar than it used to be, or what do you think? No, it seems more similar. Yeah, so it is, it, is, it is more similar than it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the the because of the internet and stuff like that. I think that this is very true. So um but I think there's still some words and words and phrases that both sides will not ever use. <laughs> so um for example, example um this is something that I don't think Americans would really ever use. Banger bangers and mash. You guys know what that is? I don't know. It's, nope. Uh, sausage and potatoes. <laughs> and bangers is um, and bangers and mash is uh, British English and sausage and potatoes is American English. And I don't think uh, Americans would ever say bangers and mash. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, hello, uh, uh, Ali. How are you today? Maybe it's your it's still uh, loading, so um, I'll check back. Hello. All right. So, hello. How are you, Ali? Yes, I'm doing well. You're doing fine. Okay. All right. Um. So we're going over some vocabulary words right now, and um. So uh, let's uh, let's start with number one. Um. Uh, Christian, can you do number one? And what you do is you read this part and then. This finishes the sentence. One of these three choices will finish the sentence. If something baffles you, you don't approve it. No. No. You can understand it. 
Uh, oh, it surprised you. I don't know. What, what, what is buff for? You're guessing on that one. And if something babbles you, yeah, you can't, you cannot understand it. So, uh, for example, the first time I heard bangers and mash, okay, I had no idea what that was. Or the, every once in a while, as a native speaker of English, I will hear somebody say something in British English, and it will completely baffle me. I have no idea what they're saying. So. Okay. So, um, Antonio, can you think of something that baffles you, that has baffled you in the re recent past? I, people um, speaking in Spanish or in English? <laughs> either, either way, either. Uh, in Spanish many times. I, I, for me it's very difficult to understand. I have a customer from Venezuela, but uh -huh. uh, um, her ancestors uh, came from Canarias. The uh -huh. Island, uh -huh. And it's very difficult to understand him because they say a word that I know I don't I don't know and the the level of voice is very different to to us. Um, they have a strong accent from I don't know if it, if it has accent of Canary Island or Venezuela and it's very difficult to understand for me. Mm -hmm. I only yeah, so. uh, 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 smile and say yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so, so that uh, she baffles you sometimes. Okay. All right. And um. So, um. Uh, Christian, can you think of something that baffles you? Yeah, I'm trying to read. Lorira in English, mm -hmm. a novel from Naoko, and, and it really buffers me. It has words that, that I never had to hear, mm -hmm. and sometimes I don't understand it, don't understand it completely. Okay. But we are trying this. Okay, all right. And Ari, can you think of something, Ali, I'm sorry, can you think of something that Baffles you. Um, Something that people do that you just don't understand. I don't know, but there's a lot of something we can buffer uh, uh, buffer as a person, uh, like on. Well, and, uh, in any relationship that uh, something happen so perfectly mm -hmm. yeah without uh, know the reason why that happened mm -hmm. yeah so something in your relationship with someone where just yeah. like what I don't get it yeah and there's something about in my culture that I, I hope it has not moved over to your cultures that this style of clothing baffles me completely. Um, why would a guys have pants and not actually pull them up? That has always completely baffled me. <laughs> do, do you guys know why this is? Yeah. Your guys. <laughs> Or does this ba is it, has this style of, of dressing uh, moved to your countries at all? Yes, people used to usually people, young people usually wear the the trousers in that way, but I think there's a big problem is they have to start to run for something. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it just totally doesn't make sense. Why do you have your bum sticking out of your pants? I mean, just... <laughs> so, uh, Christian, do you have uh, do you have people that dress like this in your country? Yeah, but it's not much common. And I don't think okay. <laughs> the pants go the, that way down. Uh-huh, okay. I, I mean, I can understand if it's a little bit, you know, but 
as far as down as this, I don't get it. And sometimes this far down and, and you know, I, I, I kind of get a, a fashion statement a little bit, but this I get, this I don't get, and this one, these two I don't get at all. So, all right, uh, Ali, do you have this yeah. kind of fashion statement in, in your country? Yeah, yeah, this has become from U.S. Uh-huh. And yeah, does, some does people, it? Yeah, some people use that to uh -huh. um, pretend like uh, um, I'm a funky guy. I'm uh, uh -huh. like that. Yeah, but not a lot. No, uh, I think that uh, from a while, not not now. Uh -huh. From a while, we the young people use that. And I think that the only the only <laughs> to show the to show the other people uh -huh. under way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's strange. It's strange. That that totally baffles me. It always has. <laughs> so, all right. So a catalyst for change. Um. Uh, so, Ali, could you um choose the answer for this one? A yeah. for change. What catalyst. does it do? Yeah, catalyst for change. I think uh, first one is make something change change more quickly. Okay. Uh, because right. yeah, uh, yeah, I I uh, uh, I understand the catalyst meaning that uh, something used to uh, in chemical, in chemical. Uh, yeah, I I took it uh, a chemical. In a, in a college or not a college in a, in a school, something mm -hmm. used to uh, expedite the process of making more more expedite the something to more uh, more quickly to happen. Mhm. Mm yeah, and 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 the, in a lot of ways it doesn't it. I mean, in chemical stuff, that is exactly what happens. But it also happens in in society as well. Um, Christian, can you think of an example of a, a catalyst for change? Some type of if it's something stupid, but heat is a catalyst for change. If you heat water, you can put it on coffee and if the water is hot, the reaction of the meats is going to be faster. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That is one example. All right. Yeah. Okay. And welcome back, Antonio. And uh, uh, so, so I'm trying to think of an example. Um, maybe a uh, politician might be a catalyst for change. Or a tragedy could be a catalyst for change. All kinds of things, of course. Okay, number three, um, Antonio, are you able to speak? Are you here? Yes. Awesome. If, okay. If okay. He is the yeah. brain with American shows. Do, okay. There are lots of American shows. Okay, so. there are lots of American shows. Okay, excellent. All right. How, how about? How about in um, your countries, um, Christian, in Colombia, is, is TV filled with the brim with American shows? F filled to the brim? Not the Colombian TV, but the the Bay channels like Fox or Warner Channel obviously are filled to the brim with American shows. Okay. But not the national channels. They okay. are affiliated with Colombian shows. Oh, awesome. Good. All right. And um, Antonio, how about in Spain? Are the channels filled to the brim with American shows? In the satellite channel, yes. It's, it's usually, there are many about uh, kitchen, about the boys, um, many movie series. Mm -hmm. And also many movies. Uh, yeah. Here um, it's compulsory for the the 
the national channels to to help uh, to, to spend money in, in movies uh, to help the the movies industry of Spain because they don't know they, they don't get money that they can do uh, many films. Okay, so the the American movie industry helps in, in the industry in Spain. Is that what I understood? No, um, excuse me. Could you repeat, please? Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to see if I understood what you were saying. So the American movie industry helps the uh, Sp the Spanish movie no. industry. No, 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 no. It doesn't help. I, I didn't say that. I the 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 Spanish channels, the different uh -huh. private channels, uh, help to different uh, companies to 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 make films. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, so a lot of the Spanish uh -huh. channels will help companies make films. Okay, okay, that's why I had to repeat because I didn't think I understood correctly. So, so the Spanish channels are actually producing uh, show span the 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 main channels in Spain are are producing shows in Spanish. Okay, awesome. Uh -huh. Awesome, that's great. And Ali, how about in your country? Are the, is TV filled to the brim with American shows? Yes, yes, there's a lot of American shows mm -hmm. every time. Do 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 the um do they dub the language or do they subtitle? No, no, uh, most of them is subtitle because top okay. top is <laughs> yeah, it's very strange for me. For the, uh, I had top, I had top uh, TV when the TV shows toppled. I hate it because mm -hmm. uh, you see that it's yeah, it's not like it's not a real. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. You and uh, read yeah, and how about in Spain? Do you guys dub or subtitle foreign shows? Antonio. Uh, there is no usual to to see the, the the TV on subtitles. Only uh, um, a math people like me <laughs> uh -huh. have to to press the button to put the subtitles in in, in Spanish because if I need to understand the, the English channel, I uh -huh. I I usually put the the TV on UV, 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 Oh. Uh huh. Okay, and then you and then you put the subtitles on. Okay. And how about in, in Christian? How about in 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 Colombia? When a foreign film or a foreign show comes up, is it dubbed or subtitled? Generally subtitles. Okay. But recently I seen that there are dubbing and dubbing. Mm -hmm. More okay. things. The major part of movie now are or movies are now dubbed. Okay, all right. Yeah, and in the in Finland, and it was all um, uh, subtitled unless they were uh, shows for children. If they were shows for children, they would would dub it. Um, otherwise, it was it would be subtitled. Um, but I've I've learned that like in Germany, they dub everything. So, <laughs> all right. Next. It was one, next like in Finland here. But it changed. Excuse me. That here in Colombia was like in Finland, only yeah. the show for three children were dubbed, but uh -huh. it has changed. Is it changing now, probably because they want the children to learn the English. <laughs> so, so. Um, uh, all right, number four, um, uh, Christian, can you read that one? If something is bordering on obsolete, is very rarely used. Yes, so if it's bordering on obsolete, it's very rarely used. So what is something in your society, Christian, that is bordering on obsolete right now? Can you think? I don't know, DVD players? DV are DVD players bordering on... I, I guess you're right. 
I was thinking cassette tape. Yeah, some people <laughs> still use it. Yeah, <laughs> no. I saw, I saw you. No, the DVD players. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, cassette players are are to, already uh, no. already no. obsolete. <laughs> yeah. I'm old. I'm old. So, um, and uh, uh, Ali, how about in your country? Is there? Can you think of something that is bordering on obsolete? So. Turn on obsolete in my country. Um, I don't remember actually any kind of okay. something yeah. can be a board and obsolete, but I think that can maybe a newspaper. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah I, think that in, I think that a lot of newspapers are starting to border on obsolete. I I agree with you there. So, um, Antonio, how about in Spain? Can you think of something that is bordering on obsolete? I have to think about, for example, the 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 phone at home. The home phone, yes. Home the, phone. Uh, the home phone, or we say the landline phone. Yeah. Phone. Phone. Yes, people yeah. used to have a mobile phone and try to avoid uh, to, to have a landline phone. Landline phone. Or a lot of people like like myself. I have two cell phones, <laughs> and so one I'll leave at home sometimes, or uh, I'll leave it in the car, and the other one I'll have with me. And the one I have with me, nobody knows the number, <laughs> so except for like my mom, you know. And and that makes it really nice. <laughs> so, um, I just I just started the system probably about three weeks ago, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> so um, number five, um, yeah, Ali, could you do that one? No. Yeah. If you agree or something. So if you decry um, something. If you decry something, uh, it upsets. It, it upsets you. Yeah, it does upset you. But the, uh, what you're doing, the reason you're, it, so it upsets you. So something upsets you, and so what you do is you decry, and you so you criticize it strongly. Okay. So when you're okay. actually decrying, you're criticizing it strongly. Um, so. I would say of these uh, five words, uh, decry is probably used the, the least in regular conversation. The rest of these are all used very much. So decry, decry probably in literature or in journalism, stuff like that. So, all right, let's uh, let's fill in these spaces and with a word or phrase from the ex from the above exercise. So number one. Um, Ant Antonio, can you do that one? Julian's closet is filled up the, to the green with clothes he never wears. Okay, how about your closet, Antonio? Are you? Is it's your closet? A, it's like the Julian's closet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Christian, how's your cl closet? Is it filled to the brim, or you have you done? Yes, as well. Recently, I take out some clothes. Oh, okay. So, so you did so you you cleaned it out and and so forth. Okay. Yeah, like a week ago. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> and so a week, uh, two weeks ago, it was filled to the brim. Uh, so Ali, how about you? Is your closet filled to the brim like Julian's closet? No, no, it's not like. Oh. Uh, okay. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't uh, uh, like. Uh, to save uh, any kind of uh, clothes, mm -hmm. okay. it, uh, well, even I'm not wearing it. Uh huh. Yeah. It, there's two types of people. There's the pack rat, which which saves everything, and they ha save everything. And then you have the minimalist. And you can tell the difference when you walk into their homes because the pack rat will have their walls will be full of things and they will have 
things all over and the minimalist will have empty walls and <laughs> empty closets and, and so forth but these are two uh, slang words actually a pack rat or minimalist so all right number two um Christian, can you read this one? The professor decried the low levels of spilling among his students. Yes. Um, do you think that... Decried. Decried, yes. Do, do you think that the spelling among uh, students has gotten worse? Um, than pre in previous generations, S since we I no think longer write. it has gotten worse, and because we now use more writing mediums like the internet. Mm -hmm. In the internet, you have to write a lot, so yeah. you practice more than before. Yeah. See, and if you if you spell something wrong. The internet will do this, and you go, "Oh, let's right-click it, let's find the correct spelling," and you know. Yeah. So, so I, I've gotten lazy when it comes to spelling. So, um, all right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Ali, could you do number three? Yeah, computer and email just um, just. Reporting an obsolete for my parent. No, let's go to the, this one. No, right baffle, here. baffle, yeah. Baffle. Right. Just baffle my parents, okay? Yeah. Okay. So I have to either call or write letters, okay? Um, how about your parents, Ali? Do the, do your parents use the computers and email and smartphones and all that? No, no, no. The, uh, the only phone they use I think that the uh, the obsolete uh, phone uh -huh. that uh, they use for him because they understand him uh -huh. and they don't uh, need to uh, email and they 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 don't have any techno te technology. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They 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 use the cell phone only for calls. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So they, they have to do regular, a regular basic cell phone, and they use the landline phone, and 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 they use regular mail and everything. Okay. Antonio, yeah. how about your parents? They don't. They don't know how switch on switch on a computer or even a mobile phone. Okay. <laughs> All, right. All right. And how about your parents, Christian? No, they use the computer a lot. Uh huh. Okay. So they're are they technically are they technically savvy or technically fit? No, I have to assist them in a lot of ways, but. They know how to turn it on and send an email. Uh huh. Okay. So they know how to do a little bit, but they're they're always asking for help. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And my mom is 75, and she just got her uh, got a smartphone, and she's been so excited. So she needs she needs a lot of assistance and help, but she's just excited about like for example. I, I was taking her somewhere a couple of days ago, and I came out, and she was listening to Pandora. <laughs> so she's all, you know, she, so the things that she can do, she can do really well. And and I spent the whole summer of 1998 teaching her how to use a computer and email. <laughs> so, so And her husband, though, is 80, and he's got dementia, and... Um, Oh. He he keeps pressing whenever you know when the the advertisements come up that says you you're, there's there's a problem with your computer he keeps pressing on that so they keep getting hacked not ha not hacked but they keep getting viruses on their computer because he yeah. doesn't know what he's doing but he wants to so bad so they're both uh, kids at heart I think so um, yeah so okay number four. Um, uh, Ollie, could you read that one? No, I guess you just did baffle. Um, Antonio. I can buy 
uh, 35mm film anywhere nowadays, I think is or border on obsolete. Yeah, I don't even think it's bordering. I think it's I think it's obsolete. <laughs> so the answer would be uh, it is bordering on the obsolete. But are they obsolete? Can you guys find film anywhere? Many years nope. ago, I saw this kind of films, but nowadays I I don't know who who have this kind of films. Yeah. And does any, uh, Christian, do you ever I think some film? directors still use 35 millimeters cameras camera uh -huh. to film. Uh huh. So some people still do it. But it's not more, more common. It's not uh -huh. common. I think the most used technology right now is the the digital cameras. Yeah, so dig digital cameras and and so forth, and and then of course, in the and then a lot of us have switched over and we're using our smartphones, <laughs> even for cameras. So, um, okay, number five, Ali, could you read this one? Ali, are you there? Maybe he's walked away. Christian, can you do number five? Okay, having children was a great... Um, I don't remember. How is that? A catalyst yeah. in his life, yeah. in John's so, life. A catalyst for change. Okay, so um, Antonio, do you have kids? Yes, I have one. Okay. When you had him or her, was it a great catalyst for change in your life? Uh, uh, definitely. <laughs> it changed my life uh, in many ways. <laughs> uh-huh. Awesome. And how old is he or she now? Uh, she's 10 years old. Uh-huh. Okay. She's different. Uh, it's getting better. <laughs> uh -huh. so, <laughs> Just the way you were laughing, I know that you were what we call the doting father. And, and she probably, a doting father is someone who is very, very proud. Very, very proud of your child. Yes, and, and she probably has her, we say in English, of, of little girls usually have her father wrapped around her finger. So... And basically saying, Dad will do anything for daughter. <laughs> so, yeah. But probably from the minute she was born. Born, Christian, do you have any kids? Nope. Nope, not yet. So. No, and I don't plan to. <laughs> no, you. Don't, oh, you're not. You. You don't plan. plan no. to, okay. All right. And yeah, I've heard it's it's a great feeling. And I've heard uh, uh, Antonio. I heard I've heard and I read on Facebook this morning by one of my colleagues that not having kids is great, but having grandchildren is even better. So <laughs> yeah, it's even better because you don't have to worry about um, you know raising the child. <laughs> you you can just spoil them. So I that's what I'm. I am. I'm not a grandparent, but I'm an aunt. <laughs> And it's been uh -huh. great. I totally spoil it, and then I send them back. So, um, okay, we've we ta we've talked about this first one. Um, so, uh, second one. Um, uh, Christian, do you speak a standard dialect in Spanish? I suppose. I try not to use strange words. Uh huh. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Antonio, do you? No, I, I never, I never speak a dialect. Okay, so you know, a standard dialect is a, just a regular, the regular Spanish that is spoken on TV. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I, I believe I speak a standard dialect in English. <laughs> I think, but I don't know. <laughs> so, um. 
So, Antonio, this next question. Do you think that it's a good thing when new words enter your language? Uh, I think so, but in Spanish, for example, we have the Royal Academy of uh -huh. the Spanish languages, and they upset or, or ban uh, this kind of words. Uh, uh, there are people who meet in a... In a in the city in, in Madrid, and they they try to to rule the the new rules and the the, the new words. They, they they approve new words every year, and they accept or not uh, the change in the languages. And is that uh, also for all the Spanish-speaking countries, or just for Spain? Yes. It, it, I, uh, for for us, it's difficult to think about in English. For for, for example, they uh, they uh, they don't don't have a, a royal academy like that, or in German as well, or in many languages. I think it's one of the the most important languages that they have uh, a kind of um, authorities in in uh -huh. that. Yeah, we apparently we do, but it's. It's basically what is the word in the dictionary. So it's like Cambridge Dictionary or Oxford Dictionary. Those those different uh, dictionaries are, are really the... Um, whether we know if a word is official or not. So, um, all right. Uh, next question. Um, uh, next question. Uh, Christian. And let's go to this this question right here, down here. Does America or the UK have a strong influence on your country culturally? Well, like I said before, I think America influence the culture the culture in Colombia a lot more than the UK. Here we have and we say we see a lot of American TV and movies, mm -hmm. and we have a more major economical partnership with America mm -hmm. that with the UK. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, I want to thank you both for um, for your participation in class today, and um, I hope to see you then in another class. Um, and uh, we'll see you uh, later. And thank you very much. Okay, thank you. It was a nice class. Good. I, good. I hope you learned some new words. So thank you. Yeah. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye.